Hi and welcome to the Felt Hub with Lincolnshire Fen Crafts. Today's tutorial, here, I'm going to show you how to make these beautiful needle felted flowers and it is all about getting the petal shape right. Really simple, really easy techniques. In the last video that I did, we made these beautiful um, carla lilies, really um, simple, realistic we kept it nice and easy not too much fuss because we didn't really want to spoil the overall look of them so in complete contrast today we're going for this flamboyant beautifully colored flower and i'm not sure what kind of flower it is it's kind of a, a succulent hybrid um it's got sort of things that remind me of a sea anemone in it. it, whatever you want to call it. I don't know what it is, but it's a kind of hybrid flower, but it is all about the petal shape, getting these petals even and firm and beautifully shaped. And there's a really simple way of doing that, which I'm going to show you. And there is no cookie cutters involved. Everything is done freehand so you can create any shape, size, form that you wish. So I'll pop those to one side. So I'm just going to make one petal shape today. Obviously, I'm, there's nine here and then I'm going to put the flower together. I wasn't going to spend the whole tutorial making nine petals exactly the same way. So I'm going to create one petal and show you how to get that really beautiful shape. I'm just using um, a hessian rice mat. So it's just hessian that I've stitched up, filled with dried rice. You can use lentils, dried beans, whatever you want. Uh, foam mat as well. I use a foam mat a lot. I'm also using a 38 standard needle. It's a 38 star. I always refer to it as a 38 standard because it's my go to good all rounder. A 36 would work well for this as well. So the lower the number, the sort of thicker the needle, the more robust the needle, the higher the number, the finer the needle. Won't need any fine needles today. So this is my 38 star. I will be using that. I will also be using a multi-tool. So if you have a, a multi-tool of any kind, this has got three needles in. I'll definitely be using my punch tool here, which I'll talk about when I use it. You might have something like this, um, needle felting pen. I've got two needles in there. It actually holds three. Or you could have another type of multi-tool, which has got three needles in a row there. But you only really need one needle. And in the absence of any multi-tools, then you can just tape a couple of um, needles together just to speed up the process. But one needle, absolutely fine. So the key, as I said to this, is getting all your petals about the same shape and the same size. And there is a really simple way of doing that. I'm using this glorious carded wool today for these petals because it's got this beautiful blend of sort of burnt orange and pinks um it's just amazing but you can use wool tops in exactly the same way as beautiful red there that's a blended wool top so anything you've got will work anything you've got so don't think that you need to go out and buy lots of special wools just just go with what you've got if you did however didn't have anything and you're just starting out and you want the wool pack that goes with this tutorial then I'll drop that in the link and you can find the wool pack in my web shop on the uh, Lincolnshire Fen Crafts website. So as I said key is getting these petals all exactly the same shape and size or thereabouts. So all you need to do is just make sure that you're using the same amount of wool for each petal. Now you can weigh it um, I think I'm using about half a gram for each petal. Or you can just do it by eye, which I normally do. So just take a piece of wool and make sure that they're all around the same length. There we go. And then um, you would do that for however many petals you are making and then just put them to one side. Now I'm just looking at my other petals here and I definitely can see that that's going to be too much. So I'm going to take a little bit off just to shorten them. And then this can be used later on. So don't, 
you know, never throw your wool away. It can always be used somewhere. So first thing is first, make sure you're using the same amount of wool for each petal. And then technique, really, really simple. All we're going to do is fold over the length of wool that we have and we're going to just rub those loose ends with our fingers just to sort of mat them a little bit to keep them together and can you see what we've done already we've created a really simple petal shape and again do the same and they will all be about the same weight and size because you've already measured out or weighed out all of your pieces and it doesn't matter if one's slightly bigger or smaller than the other um, I will also show you a way to rectify that so there we go so that those would be our petals let's say you've got them all there and time to start felting so this is a carded wool so carded wool is short fibers and wool tops are long fibers that's the easy and quick way of explaining and all I'm going to do is start to felt and I'm just using my felting, one single felting needle to start with. And the key to this as well also is getting nice, soft, firm edges. I would say that's about one and a half to two mils thick, but it's really firm because if it's firm, it means you can actually bend and manipulate that shape and it will actually hold. No need for any wires or anything like that. So all I'm doing now is I'm just starting to pull in this wool. Can you see with my needle? I'm not even using this hand. And what we want to do is we want to bring over these edges. And the reason we want to do that is so that these edges are nice and neat. No sort of loose, raw wool. If we bring those edges in, a little bit of grass there, it saves a whole lot of felting later on. Now you could keep that shape as your petal shape. In fact, imagine um, if you're made, I don't know if you've made animals, but if you make needle felted animals and you've made a hair, then that, as you can see, you could use that and adapt it and make really fabulous hair ears. And you know, the, you can make leaves, anything you really like. The, the possibilities are, are endless with this um, technique. So there we go. And all I'm doing is I'm just going through that top layer I'm not pushing right through into the bag. I don't need to. That's not actually doing anything. If you push through that, just through that top layer, it will stop it sticking to your mat and your topper. And these toppers are really important because they do protect your mats. And that's about one, one point two mil, hundred percent wool felt topper, but thirty percent wool would be fine as well. So I've just turned that over, and I'm continuing to felt. I'm just going to decide where that's. I think. I'll probably that will be the end now we need this loose part because this is what we will use to attach all our petals together when we um we gather all our pieces together for felting so I'm just continuing to felt and then what I'm going to do now is I'm just as you can see here We've got this nice sort of, I've got, I've, it's not, I like to have sort of one side slightly different, but you can also have both sides the same. So I'll go with that for this, for this tutorial. And I'm just, put your fingers, spread them apart. And that means you're not going to poke them. And can you see we're just creating a nice straight edge there. If you're worried about poking your fingers, definitely use finger guards. Um, what you can also do is actually use a piece of cardboard folded in half like so and use that to straighten your edges. But I'm used to pricking my fingers, so, it, you know, I, I, I just prefer to work this way. But most certainly, if you're just starting needle felting, you will prick your fingers more often. So I would absolutely go with finger guards or, or use the cardboard. But can you see how lovely that shape is and how it's coming along really nicely already? So I'm not going to do too much more to that at the moment because I really want to get this firm because it's quite thick. Can you see the difference? It's quite lofty still. There's a lot of air in there, whereas that one is nice and firmly felted, really flat. 
And what I'm also going to do here is just for an accent colour, and if you can see on there, we've got this, this sort of zingy colour. I've got this little bit of zingy yellow. You don't have to do this, but I'm just going to pop in a little bit of this zingy yellow on top there just for some really nice contrast. You don't need much. Just, it, you know, it's a really beautiful colour. works really well with the wool I'm already using. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my punch tool because this is really going to speed up the process. So it comes with seven needles in it. Um, I'll pop a link below as well. I've taken two out and I'm using five. And what this does is it... It's like the big guns of the multi-tools and it is absolutely perfect for flat felting. Whether it's petals, ears, you're doing pictures, anything that is flat felted as opposed to, you know, an animal, a, a big three, sort of three-dimensional shape, it's perfect. And as you can see as well now, because the wool's becoming more felted, it's not actually sticking to the mat at all. Just another point while I'm here, make sure you actually move your work around the mat and then it will save creating weak points in the topper and the mat below. So I'm really firming this up. I want to do this because I'm going to come back to these sides again. So we, can, we do it, you know, in little sort of sections. But can you see now how that's becoming much thinner and much firmer now it's quite big so again i'm going back and now that it's firm can you see how easily those sides are shrinking in when i um attack it with the needle and the other side now, as i said you can you can do any shape you wish but this is sort of, you know, what I, I really love this shape. It's really effective. And then I really want to bring these sides in as well. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to leave just this little bit loose here because this is where all the petals are going to attach to each other. Much, much easier if you have some loose wool. That applies for any needle felting project, really, where you're attaching felted parts to each other. Always leave the ends loose. So if you're um, attaching legs to an animal, leave the top of the legs loose. You can see how quickly that shape is really, really beginning to form. I love this colour so much. And can you imagine these these gorgeous flowers? Um, you know, you could put them on stalks, on stems, have them as a, a, you know, sort of faux flower display in the house all year round. Imagine them on an Alice band or as part of a fascinator for a wedding. Imagine them as part of a wedding bouquet. Absolutely beautiful. And these as well, mixed in with those Carla lilies, would the, the contrast would just be amazing. So I'm just going to go back to the punch tool again. And again, with the punch tool, you're not forcing everything through the mat. You're just going through that top layer. And because I'm using this carded wool, um, there's no holes that are visible. And also the punch tool really helps to get rid of any imperfections and again as you can see that's quite a bit wider than this one here so what you can do now is you can actually use one of your petals that you've made as a guide to the size and the shape can you see how that is shrinking really quickly and I know that those petals are going to be almost identical. And it's such an easy way to get the right size and shape. If you've got the workshop pack, you will, um, you will have this 
uh, little box with all your bits and pieces in. And then also you'll have some size guides for the lilies and for the petals that we're creating now. So if you've got those, you'll have some size guides anyway. So again, back to this. I've got my original petal on the top, the new petal that I'm creating on the bottom, and I'm working on that bottom petal to make sure that we're more or less size identical. It doesn't have to be um, exact. But near as damn it. And there we go. And then I can see here, I've got this little curve there. And you can either leave that like so. You can actually even, you don't even need the point. You know, you could just have that really simple petal shape going on. Um, and I, But I like, quite like a little curve in mine. So I'm just going to pop my fingers back here again. I'm just going to work this area and see this needle is flat and straight. Don't bend these needles, they will break, especially if you're using a finer needle. The 38s are quite strong, they'll, they'll take quite a beating. So can you see how that is really starting to shape? And you can also, if you use your hands now, because it's really firm, you can actually use your fingers. I've got it's a bit wide there, so I'm just going to go along here and narrow that. So it's just about keep going back until you're happy with it. And once you've done this a few times, you'll find that you will just, you know, you can make these flowers really quickly and easily. There's no stress involved. Don't allow yourself to stress over this. It doesn't matter. Every Everything can be fixed. If a petal is a slightly different shape, it doesn't matter. It's all about relaxing and enjoying this craft. A little bit there. There we are. So I'm happy with that. They're not exactly the same, but for me, that, that's good enough. That's good enough. If you're a perfectionist and you want to continue, and uh, then, then absolutely go for it but for me I am happy with that it's nice and firm I can I can bend it and it will hold fine absolutely lovely really happy with that so the next thing is putting it together so I'm just going to bring all of these petals onto my mat and see what we've got here we've got this beautiful it is almost like um, you know, something you'd find in a lily pond. And then you've got these, which are like this sort of sea anemones or coral flowers. Anyway, we want this nice circular shape. And the reason we kept these bits loose is so that we can actually attach all of these petals together. So what I'm going to do is I'm kind of going to work upside down. So if that's my good side... I'm going to work like this. So this will be the back of our flower. Let's have a look. Got some contrast going on there. And then keep them all quite close together and then just a few pokes with the needle on those loose bits just to attach them. Flip it over. I've lost that one there, you see. So if we flip it over, make sure I catch everything on this side as well. And what I've done here is I've done them quite close so that we don't have any big gaps. And you could do multi-layered flowers. You know, this is just one layer of petals all the way around. But you could do you could do double layers and you just make all sorts. And then the next one, just going to pop on here. Bring that in there. And then, that's quite small, that one. Might come back to that, see what I've got there. And then another one here in the centre. Flip it over to the front. See what it's looking like. Looks good, happy with that. Again, just a little bit more felting. 
And all of this area here isn't going to be visible because it's all going to be covered. Another one there. So we're going to have our brooch on the back if you're using it as a brooch. And we're going to have a really lovely um, centre. Put that one in. And don't worry about it being perfectly even, um, petals all in exactly the same place. Again, we're going to, we'll fix any, any of those issues. Just use the one I've just made, I think. So we'll have that as the back. Pop that in there. Flip that over. Move it to another spot. So there we go. Can you see how that's coming together beautifully? as a flower. So let's just have an inspect and just see where everything is sitting. I'm pretty pleased with that. And then I'm just going to push in a straight sort of diagonal line, almost flat really, just slightly at an angle, just push all those in. So we've got that beautifully made. And again, you know, we can move all of these around when we've finished. And then I'm just going to, just for extra um, extra security, really, to make sure it all stays together, I'm going to just pop some fresh wool in the centre there. I mean, if you wanted to, you could make that your centre. You could just bring it all in and turn it and build it up and create a center with the wool you've already used but I think um, it will look a bit lost and then I'm going to put a bit of fresh wool on the back here and this just means that it's extra secure because you can over felt so what happens is if you over felt particularly when you're flat felting um, the wool fibers lock together but if you find that it's firmed up and then you carry on felting and it's starting to get soft that means you've over felted um, so if it starts to loosen again, because you've broken all the fibres, so you've broken all those those barbs that have locked together. And that's why it's quite good to add a little bit of fresh wool just to stop that from happening. Now, there's several ways you can do this. I have a felt ball here. It's just a pure wool ball and you could just pop that in the center and just felt through it until it holds and have that as your as your center of your flower you could actually as well you could actually felt those petals around it if you really want to add more dimension to it and have that lifted and come up like a sort of half open flower so that's one way you could do things the other way is to actually um, use some lovely, beautiful wool tops, which we've got here. And all you would do is take a few of your sort of favourite colours, your blends here. And then you would actually lay those in the middle of that flower. And then bring them all up to the centre like so. And then you would just trim. Trim them right down to here. And then you end up with this beautiful sort of fluffy finish here. And what I've also done with this flower is to add a little bit of embellishment here. So I've just popped a little bit of white along the centre there. You could use um, white silk, any fibres that you have. You don't need much. It's just kind of just a, a little accent. As you can see there, and then you can just use your needle just to, to spread those things around. But what I've done with this one is I've got this really nice yarn. So I've just snipped three pieces. This is just um, three or four ply yarn, uh, wool yarn. And all you do is just separate 
all those pieces. And I've got some nice sort of contrasting colours here. So I've got this rust and this um, nice white and then this sort of rich purple, not aubergine, but it's a, it's a really rich pinky purple. So all you need to do then is gather them together and you could actually use, I mean you can felt them straight in because they are actually pure wool, you can felt them straight in or if you wanted to tie them together with um, a little piece of yarn you could do. But I'm just going to pop those in the middle there and just quickly tack those on and then can you see how you've created those sort of beautiful stamen um, type details in the centre of that flower. Really pretty. But that's just another idea for you to have a go at. So really, you know, I hope that's pretty much everything. I mean, if you want to, like you say, just pop your brooch back on the back and just sort of either glue that on or sew it on or you can pop a little bit of felt over and just felt that on it's quite easy and wear that any way you wish so that's everything hope you enjoyed that and join me again for another tutorial soon thanks very much mm -hmm.